How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to Timberborn, and welcome back to the Iron Isles, where things are going both well and also not entirely according to plan. We've been focusing a lot on golems recently, but we've been neglecting the beavers, and in doing that, we are starting to run out of food, and our water supplies are a little bit lower than I'd like them to be as well. Specifically, we have 2,300 food available and stockpiled across the entire colony, which is not exactly ideal. We need more than that. At least I think we need more than that. We do have fewer beavers than we've had in quite a while. And we do have to remember that District 4, I think this is District 4, right? Yeah, District 4 currently has like two people there, so it's not a huge deal. District 3 has no one and District 5 also happens to have no one. So really, it's District 1 and then District 2 that we need to worry about. Now, District 2 is pretty good in terms of its water supply. I don't expect it to run out anytime soon. And its food has been relatively consistent. It's not the end of the world there. And then District 1, I mean, it has got 1,500 food in here. And I'm starting to think that part of the problem might just be the fact that there's a lot of golems in this space that are just out of energy. So we might want to do something about that. That might be a little something something to look into. Now, admittedly, the power network for this entire space isn't getting as much as it wants. It's being supplied 2400. It's requesting 2480. So we could maybe throw another engine on there, but I don't really think it's the end of the world. And to be quite honest, given the fact that it's requesting 2480 and we're providing 2400, I would almost be tempted to say that we just get rid of these large water wheels because, well, these ones could probably stay, but these two down here at this point could probably go because to be brutally honest, they almost never move. So I'm going to rip these guys out because I just I just don't think we need them. And I'm going to go ahead and sort of redo a little bit of this space. Now, this is something I think I did do between episodes. I was going to put a bunch of charging stations down here, but I think I'm going to just try and change up this uh, space a little bit. And I have to remember that we do need to connect over here because a lot of this space or this industry gets its power from up here now. So I have to be careful with this, but I am going to go ahead and redo some of this space just to try and make it a little bit better, it might be better if I go in here with the delete buildings option like this, just to make things a little bit quicker. So we'll go ahead and clear those out. And I think I'm also going to mark resources for demolition here. And we're going to see what we can do in terms of charging stations, because I think having some nice central charging stations would be kind of fantastic. So we'll go ahead and prioritize all of this. And what we can also do is go ahead and bring some platforms over here. We'll bring some double platforms over here. And I guess we could... How do I want to do this? Because that is the question. Can I put charging stations underneath the platform? That's an important question. No, I cannot. Okay. So here's what I'm thinking we do. I think we go and get ourselves a T intersection and I think we put it right here. I think we get ourselves a high power shaft and put it right here and we get another T intersection and put it right there. This just runs over to here to connect all that together. And then what I want to do here basically is I want to bring some paths uh, sort of like this and sort of like this and down there as well. Now, this is going to be a whole mess of, uh, of path work here, but I think it's going to be worth it. And to be honest, I could probably go in and just clear some of these paths out. We don't need uh, those ones, and arguably we don't need that one or that one either. And is there a section of path under there? There absolutely is, so that one can go away as well. And so what I can do with this space, what I'm thinking, is that we basically go ahead and get a couple of corner intersections there i'm gonna go ahead and prioritize all of this as well to get it done nice and quickly and then basically i'm gonna put a whole bunch of charging stations around here so something like this will connect everything together two charging stations down there a couple of charging stations here and all we need to do is get a single straight power shaft under uh there to connect all those together 
and that'll just be a bunch of a uh, bunch of golem charging for that space and hopefully it works hopefully it's good if it isn't then it isn't but I would imagine it's going to do good things for us. So as soon as we get that built, we should see all of these tired golems figure themselves out and all of the problems with those golems will hopefully go away. But obviously that doesn't solve everything. That doesn't solve the problems with food production, which admittedly has been, it's been lacking for a while. We've known that it's been lacking for a while, but I'm kind of thinking that we might be able to help that. I'm starting to think that this whole terraforming thing that we've been doing might actually help us out in a pretty big way. Now, obviously, we need these dirt piles to be finished, and we also need this terraforming station to be finished. So we have 769 metal blocks sitting somewhere. I would very much like to know where those are, because I could use those. Uh, 697 of them happen to be in District 5. So... We might want to set up District 5 to move some metal blocks down to District 1 to help with all of this construction. So let's go ahead and uh, and set that up right about there. You guys are going to move metal blocks down to District 1, and we do need some limits on that so we don't get carried away. Yeah, maximum of 100 in District 1 will be perfectly fine. So that should keep us in a good spot. That should mean that the terraforming station as well as the dirt piles get built in no time at all and now that they are built and now that we have a teeny tiny little bit of dirt down here and now that we've managed to actually terraform a single block of terrain we can go ahead and start working on the temple which is going to take forever but that's not the exciting thing for me what's exciting is the idea that we could now in theory go ahead and place a bunch of terrain blocks right here and start reclaiming land essentially and by doing this we can i guess get a bunch more farmland and that's that's kind of exciting to me i mean that's not a bunch more farmland but it is more farmland than we would otherwise have so that's still kind of a big deal and we can sort of similarly you know go ahead and do something like this turn that into a bit of a straighter corner and that gives us a bit more farmland so again kind of exciting right there kind of a big deal and then if we wanted to we could expand up into this space for example or into this space over here this terraforming is 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 a huge deal quite frankly it, it is just this is this is big i'm i'm very excited about the uh the potential here I'm actually also very tempted to just expand into this space with a bunch of uh, a bunch of land because because I can really uh, it's it's very, very tempting to just do something like that for a little bit more. I don't know, harvesting or something or other. That's that's a thing we can do now. It might take forever. I'm actually not too sure. I mean, we do have dirt shipments coming down from uh, good old. What do you call it? District five. So. As long as we have dirt coming down, there we go. Yeah, we're already working on it. We're already filling in this space. This is really cool. <laughs> this is actually this is actually really cool. I'm really excited about this. So we can build things like the temple, and we could build more builders' huts and hauling posts and stuff like that. And then we can just throw up some new land, and then boom, there you go. You've got you've got a bunch of um Oh man, that's really cool. <laughs> you got a bunch bunch more farmland. That's the way to go. That's the way to do this. I <laughs> This is actually really really cool. Uh, I'll tell you what I will do though. I want to go ahead and prioritize building all of these because we really need these charging spots for the golems. In fact, what I'm going to do is prioritize uh those two to be uh, those two right there to begin with so that we can actually get this all connected together and then get this place up and running so that golems can come in here and actually recharge because we we did take this away now that we've stopped golem production in district one so if we can get this going it would be kind of great i think district one does have it does have some metal blocks yeah it's got 22 and there we go we actually have space for them to recharge right in the middle now so that's a big deal and the fact that this this is going kind of quickly that's also kind of a big deal Although it does look like District 1 might be 
out of dirt at this point, which is fair enough. District 1's also out of wheat flour. It has a bunch of pine resin, but it, it is actually out of wheat flour, which tells me that the grist mills have been working very efficiently. So I, I think I'm starting to see how exactly we might have run out of... Uh, <laughs> we might have run out of steam on a lot of this uh, this farming nonsense here. Definitely sort of makes sense. So I think what we'll do is we will just go ahead and reclaim a bunch of land over here as well. I don't, I don't know how, I want to say, feasible it's it's going to be to actually go ahead and try to reclaim a whole bunch of land. I say reclaim as if it was ever mine to begin with, but you know what I mean. I I want to just see if it's you know. If it's if it's something we can do, can we get all of this land? Can we get all of this land? Is it going to take forever or is it going to be a quick process? Because if it's a quick thing, then this really is huge. If it's going to take forever, then this really is a waste of time. Basically, that's that's kind of how I'm looking at it. So we'll see what happens there. And it also kind of makes me wonder if we should do some terraforming all the way up here. Right. Should we maybe... I don't know, fill in some space along this river, narrow the river a little bit and use it for more, more wood. Although does this place even, yeah, well they have, they have got logs now. I guess this extra bit of forestry over here might be helping them out a little bit. It was definitely, definitely a bit of a chance. And also this space, we could terraform this into something. Well, no, we actually couldn't do that because if I remember right, this district doesn't have coverage down there. So that's... Yeah, that's potentially a bit of a lost cause unless I figure out a way to, uh, unless I figure, well, I mean, we have, we have reached down there. I just don't think the district will appreciate me doing that. I'd also have to, you know, put a bunch of dynamite that goes all the way to the edge of the map so that I can have the water flow out. Otherwise, if I plant trees down here, it's going to flood the trees and that would be a bit of a problem. So this, this might've been, this might've been a little more ambitious than I want to admit that it was. Now, you know what is actually kind of weird? The fact that uh, District 5 has three vacancies and no golems. That's that's kind of wild. That is, uh, <laughs> that is actually kind of wild. Let's have a little look here. So we have three vacancies in District 5. So, I mean, we have two vacancies now. I mean, what if we set a minimum of 140 golems in this district? So now we're covered. We do have some that are unemployed, but I guess that's fine. Do we want to maybe, do we want to turn these on? Is it is it worth turning on this, uh, this production here? I don't know if we need more golems, but you know what? At this point, I'm willing to do it. Why not? We'll just start producing even more golems because, I mean, we are, we are sort of on track to replacing our population with robots anyway. Not that I... Like I've said before, I don't necessarily think we're actually going to do that at this point, but if we wanted to, well, no, that's not exactly what I said. What I said was that we, if we do it, it'll be like a little extra video, but you know what I mean? Y you know what I mean? If, if we do it, it'll be its own thing. We, we, we are on track to doing it though. I think Golem production has reached a point where if I turn on all of the assemblers and all of the factories and give it a couple of hours, we would in theory be able to replace every beaver now you know what i'm realizing we never experimented with we never experimented with putting golems into farmhouses and i think it's about time that we do that and i'm going to try that in district two because district two always seems to have a bunch of crops just laying about with nothing being done about them so we're going to go to district two we're going to go to migrate population and we're going to say it needs a minimum of six golems at any one time because there are six golem vacancies so in theory this district should now have six golem workers with none working wait a minute do we have golems here i think we do i think they might be on the way regardless this district is well now has golem farm hands and hopefully they will continue to be a thing and hopefully that means that we're going to see all of these crops come in and I mean, if we look at District 2's numbers, it actually does have a lot of just potatoes in storage. So we might want to look into maybe putting some golems to work in some grills as well. Let's give that a shot since it's a thing that we never actually seem to do. We can go back here and we can change that six into an eight. 
and that should give us a couple of golems that can work in those grills as well. We actually have another one, so we'll go ahead and turn that into a nine golems for District 2 right there. And so now the food production in District 2 should be considerably better because these golems are essentially going to work around the clock to go ahead and harvest all of this, I would I would imagine. Uh, although I'm realizing it's actually their storage that seems to be the problem. So I wonder, I mean, we have all of this storage right here. So why don't we go through and say that this first set here could have a bunch of potatoes? Why don't we say instead of scrap metal, it's uh, up to 200 potatoes in there. And we can go to this one and say exactly the same thing. And that should make it a little bit easier for these guys to operate here. Especially since we're not actually harvesting scrap metal uh, in this area anymore. So this this seems like a good way to go. Well, I'm not going to use all of these for potato storage because I think we do still have some scrap metal uh, potentially in some of these guys. So we'll not go too crazy, but that should that should help us out a little bit. I imagine that's going to make those golems, if they could feel happiness, they would feel happiness. But as it stands, they can't, so they don't. But if they could, I think they'd be very happy about that. Now, in other news, this first little section of terraforming looks like it's actually done, which is kind of wild. So let's go ahead and plant some potatoes in this new space. And that means that we can now expand our potato harvest, which is... A lovely thing. We also just finished the temple, which is kind of wild. Wasn't expecting that to get done as quickly as it, it got done, but that is actually a really cool building. We also have these beaver statues. I forgot that I was even building those. I actually really like this little space now. I'm not going to lie. Uh, and I'm also wondering where my terraformers are because they're not over there. So where exactly are they? Oh, they're doing this bit. Okay. Well, that's fair enough. That's that's actually that actually makes sense. Uh, let's have them prioritize this, and then I want them to prioritize all of this, and then they can go and do the bit over by the berries. So this will give us an extra little bit of farming, this will give us extra farming, and then this will give us extra berries. Now, talking about food, it is worth pointing out that District 2 has immediately almost tripled the amount of food that was in here. At one point when I looked at it, it had about 200 units. We're almost at 600 now, so... Having the golems working in the farms and in the uh, in the grills, it turns out, is very, very good. Now, I don't think we need to do that for District 1, because District 1, for whatever reason, it seems they're very good at harvesting everything that they plant. And I would almost be tempted to say that we could probably go into District 1 and clear out some of the uh, some of the trees to be honest. I don't I don't think we need all of them. These guys down here especially, I think we just don't necessarily need them. So just to be safe, I'm going to say that we're going to mark all of these trees here for demolition. And that's going to free up this space for more potatoes or whatever I want to plant. We haven't actually got into aquatic plants, actually, which is something I'm tempted to do, but I also don't know that I want to do... So, I don't know. We could also do a bunch of wheat over here, which might be a better idea. Because they do have a... Well, actually, you know what? Bread is something we are not in short supply of. It's actually grilled potatoes that we don't have a lot of. So, I think, yeah, I think doing potatoes over here is sort of the way to go. So, we'll go ahead and prioritize clearing this space. And I'm also kind of thinking I would like to maybe get a little path in here. I don't know if we necessarily need to, but making sure that we actually do have access to all of this is kind of important. And also we do need to get a farmhouse in here. So I think maybe a farmhouse can go right up here at the end or something. We'll have a little path that goes out to it and that'll be how we have farmers in this space. I don't really know. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't necessarily matter. What does matter is that this is coming along really quickly over here. This, this terraforming business, I thought it might take forever. It turns out it's, it turns out it's pretty friggin' quick. Now I did say I was going to put another farmhouse out here, but I've realized something. This guy actually has full coverage up there, so we don't need to do that. So what we can do is just go ahead and plant a bunch of potatoes. 
and that'll be more potatoes for this entire space. We've actually got our beavers happier than ever as well. We've got them up to happiness level 14, which is amazing. More of them could do with wet fur. Admittedly, it would be nice to, uh, to do something about that. A lot of them are very happy with their potatoes as well. Some of them would like more bread. Some would like more carrots. Maybe we should do more carrots and then grilled chestnuts and cattail crackers and maple pastries, I imagine, would be uh, would be something they'd love. Also, campfires and rooftop terraces. Maybe we should look into some of those as well and let them socialize a little bit. We'll get this going, though. We'll get some more uh, some more potatoes in there. And I guess we could... How do I make maple pastries? What do I need for that? So maple... That's not, that's not a bakery. This is a bakery. So maple pastries is wheat flour, maple syrup, and logs. Cattail crackers is cattail flour, logs, and then that's crackers, and then bread, and so on. Okay. So I don't think we have maple trees around here. Or if we do, we're certainly most likely chopping them down. So what if we were to change things up a little bit? What if we were to perhaps, because we have this guy here. This guy's kind of important. Uh, this district down here, good old District 3, has a ridiculous amount of wood laying around. So what if we were to say that perhaps this district starts working towards maple trees rather than just simply having wait it does have wait it does have wait i've been planting maple this whole time what am i talking about i'm an idiot i'm a complete idiot okay uh in that case here's here's what i'm thinking i'm i'm kind of thinking that we could maybe get ourselves a tapper's shack out here if not two of them uh, and just harvest all of the maple syrup that we have around here. That kind of seems like the way to go. So let's go ahead and mark resources for demolition. I'm not too sure. I think we'll go for uh, we'll go for here, and we'll go for here. And I'm kind of hoping I can get the tapper shacks into those spaces. I might actually have to go back a little bit further on this just to make sure. Uh, so we'll clear all of that out. We'll also go ahead and prioritize all of that because I want it done nice and quickly. And now that we have those placed, all we need to do is wait for them to build as well as this warehouse, which is set up to only accept maple syrup. And then, of course, the long term goal is that we would use this distribution post to move that maple syrup to wherever. I haven't actually decided for sure where it should go. I am kind of thinking it should be District 1 since that is the bulk of our beaver population. So maybe we just go ahead and do that. Does District 1 even have, does it have any maple syrup right now? It, uh, I don't think it does. It has got, uh, it has got treated planks, which is great. Uh, we do, we do have maple trees around that do have like syrup on them though. So I almost wonder if it would be worth going and clearing out some space, say, there, for example, so that we can have a tapper that can go and occasionally get uh, some uh, some maple syrup from some of these guys, like down there as well. So like a tapper there would be an amazing idea. A tapper there, I think, would be a great idea. And that's probably more than enough. So we'll give this a shot. I suppose we'll give it a shot and see what happens if we can get uh, some maple syrup into the district, you know, without having to deliver it. But I think we can also deliver it because, well, we might as well. So uh, maple syrup there and we can go to uh, distribution limits for district three and they can just have up to like a thousand maple syrup. We're really not going to need any of it in uh, in district three itself. So this Kind of seems like a good idea. The only issue is getting gears for these guys, but I mean, we are producing them. It just takes time in District 3 because I'm pretty sure we're consuming them for uh, golem production. So that's that's fine. That's whatever. Uh, we also seem to have done this. Interesting. Very, uh, very interesting that this. Oh, wait, no, it's not done yet, is it? It's it's almost done, which means this is done over here. Good Lord. Terraforming is scary. I'm going to be honest, it's 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 kind of scary how um, how efficient 
uh, they are at getting all this done. That's also not as much land as I thought it was going to be. It, it, it seemed like a lot more at the time, but it's still, it's still really cool, man. I'm not going to, I'm not going to play it down. Terraforming is kind of awesome. All right, so now that we've started this little maple syrup adventure, while we're waiting for it to actually be a thing, I think we should look into how to better, I don't know, Im Im how to improve what we have going on here with all of the, uh, the residential space in District 1. Now, I would very much like to get some, uh, some rooftops up here. The problem is this is actually too far away from any paths for beavers to get working on. So if I want to do that, I'm going to have to basically build scaffolding to get up to the rooftops, which is kind of a pain, but to be fair, it's also kind of to be expected. So let's do this and this we will go sort of the whole way across. And I guess what we can do is something like this, and that'll give us access to uh, to those upper levels there, I suppose. It's not exactly what I'm looking for, but it's it's good enough. Uh, we'll go ahead and do similar here. We're actually probably going to need these to go the whole way along the building, so we'll get that going. Uh, we'll go ahead and do this, this, and, uh, and, and this right here. So we'll do sort of the same on the other side. Man, this is going to be... This is going to be a lot of wasted resources, but I suppose it's going to be worth it if we can get up there and actually build these uh, these rooftops. So we'll go ahead and sort of do all of this. That's not where I wanted some stairs at all. I wanted a nice little bit of uh, bit of path there. And we'll just, we'll do that for now. And I think what we can also do is maybe prioritize this side rather than that one. In fact, we'll make that one the lowest priority it can possibly be so that they don't build it because I want to see if they can build it from the height that I've got there or if I need to go higher because if I need to go higher then obviously we can I just I want some rooftops up there man I really do I want to see if we can get some rooftops up there I also want to get some rooftop terraces which obviously will not be a thing on uh, on these buildings because we're putting roofs on them but for example if we went to well-being and we looked at something like a uh rooftop terrace we could put it on top of a warehouse if we really wanted to that is an option although i don't know if the district actually extends to uh it does extend to there interesting i feel like we should build a rooftop terrace up there the only problem is i don't think we can actually do it i'm pretty sure i i can't uh, i can't build anything out over here i could get some stairs there but I can't, oh man, how would I do that? I'd have to probably go out and around, right? So this little space would have to go. Which wouldn't be the end of the world. Wait, can I just put, a, can a rooftop terrace be on the ground? Hold on a second. Above ground, must be placed atop other buildings. I wonder, could I just place it on top of a bunch of platforms? Because if I could do that, I can just sort of build it anywhere, right? I mean that that in in theory, of course. That's uh, I could build it anywhere in theory. Although I gotta say, I think building it on top of the warehouse was actually the right call. This looks really really cool, and we're also gonna build a bell right here, which I just think looks cool as well. It's like this is your break room, and this is the bell that says get back to work. It just, it's just I I kind of like it up there. I'm also thinking we could do some terraforming back here to. Uh, you know, put some of this land to uh, to use. So let's go ahead and do exactly that. Let's go ahead and put all of this land to use right there. And I mean, it's still, you know, we still have this nice curve going around there. So it's not like we're completely, well, we are, we are extending the land quite a bit. I don't know where I was going with that, but this, this is good. This is going to give us more space for potatoes. And so hopefully this district is in the not too distant future going to have a really good amount of potatoes in storage. Speaking of things in storage, though, we do currently have 203 maple syrup, so I'm slightly tempted to say that maybe District 1 should start uh, start making some uh, some maple, maple pastries. It needs wheat flour, it needs maple syrup. I'm pretty sure we could say that maybe two of our bakeries in District 1 
can start making maple pastries. And so in doing that, we should see, I'm hoping, the happiness go up to 15, which I think is higher than I've ever had it. I'm not really too sure. I know 14 is higher than we've ever had it in this series, but I think in Timberborn in general, I don't know if I've ever had happiness at 15. So it's going to be really nice if we could do that. Oh, and we've actually managed to do it. We've got happiness level 15, and I'm assuming it's partly to do with maple pastries. I'm not really 100% sure, but I'm I'm quite happy about that. What I'm also realizing is that we could use this new terraforming space to get rid of this shrine, which people aren't going to love. But then what I can do is go in here and place a little something, something like the, where is it? The campfire right about there. Yes, it's in the middle of all of my, my farm space, but a campfire is another one of those things that the beavers want. So it's going to be one of those things that the beavers happen to get. I'm also sort of thinking that we could probably just go and place a shrine elsewhere. We do have plenty of space for it. So if we wanted to, we could place a couple of shrines just here. It's not exactly a really luxurious place for them, but it's a couple of shrines that we otherwise wouldn't have had. So I think this is kind of the way to go. We'll get this terraforming done. We'll get the campfire in there. That'll hopefully boost the happiness that little bit further. We have dipped back down beneath 15. We're down to 14. So, you know, we'll 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 see what happens. Hopefully, hopefully this all gets done nice and quickly. I mean, a campfire is just logs. We have plenty of those. And then the terraforming is just dirt, which is getting delivered every single day from District 5. So it's not it's not a matter of if this will get built. It's just a matter of when. Also, side note, this thing is continuing to burrow into the ground, and I am genuinely terrified of the day when this thing throws out a little error that's like, hey, I can't dig any further. Figure it out. Oh, speaking of happiness, I've just realized that we haven't unlocked any of the monuments yet. We should absolutely be doing that. So we'll go It's 12,000 for this one. We can afford it. Uh, so the laborer monument is just 200 logs, and it actually does look really cool. I don't know where to place it though. I mean, I I, I kind of want to say like in here, you know, right near where all of the, the beavers kind of go, but that doesn't seem like it's grand enough for, for a monument. Uh, it also does have an area of effect, so it kind of makes sense. Oh, we've got the roof done on this place, great. So doing this has actually helped. I did modify the scaffolding by the way, so it's a little bit higher. Uh, so I think what we'll do, just very quickly is I want to go and demolish those parts. I want to demolish uh, this part and that part. And what we're going to do instead is single platform, double platforms and triple platforms. And then we can do stairs, stairs, and we're at, le we're at happiness level 16. Ooh, not bad at all. Uh, so what we can do is just prioritize all of this and that'll get us some uh, some rooftops on there as well. So that's going to be good for us. I guess this monument, I mean, it's not going to go central in this space. So we kind of just need to pick a place for it. And then the other one's the flame of progress. It's a bunch of planks, which is going to take forever. It has a huge area of effect on it, which is kind of wild. Uh, I guess if we really wanted to, we could... We could try and put them on, on platforms somewhere. I don't really know, to be honest. We could try and put them near the temple if we really wanted to as well. That would be an option. Uh, I, I kind of feel like we should build some levees to put these things up on, though. And then, you know, like the flame of progress. The flame of progress to me should, I think, be built in District I want to say in District 2, because the Flame of Progress carries over towards District 5. I'm not going to build it in District 5, because those golems aren't going to care about it. But I think building it in District 2 would be nice, because it's like, this is the last, you know, the Flame of Progress. This is the last beaver's, you know, settlement before you go towards the golems, right? 
or District 3 technically would be that as well. It was the first beaver or golem settlement. So I don't know. I'm overthinking it is is really what I'm doing. That's that's the truth of it is I'm, I'm overthinking it. We don't it doesn't matter this much. I just want them to go somewhere that looks cool. So I think I think for one of them, I think one of them needs to go in here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to mark these resources for demolition. And I'm going to uh, I'm going to put some levees in there just to sort of raise this thing up onto a platform. And then that's where the I guess the laborer monument can go. And that'll give them all within seven tiles. So pretty much everyone going through this central space, except for anyone that goes over there, annoyingly. Huh. This might not have the this might not have the desired effect if I put it there. Oh man. <laughs> I really am overthinking it. I think this space would be the other option. If I put it in this space, because then every beaver, almost every beaver that goes through this district is gonna be affected by it right here. So I think what we'll do is I'm going to mark these resources for demolition and I'm going to, uh, to prioritize that and I'm going to move the path along to that spot. So the, uh, the path is going to go like this and then the path needs to go away from there. And then what I'm also going to do is mark, I want to say these resources and those resources for demolition as well. So we'll get those cleared out. We can go ahead and put a little bit of uh, a little bit of uh, potato right there. And then this will be the two spots for the two monuments. We're going to sort of downgrade from my grand plan and we're going to go for efficiency on this one. So a couple of levies there and there. And what we can do is go into Monuments, the Laborer Monument is right there, and the Flame of Progress is right there. Now, the Flame of Progress is 400 planks. Funnily enough, District 1 doesn't have 400 planks, but District 3 has a thousand of them. So, uh, I want to say that we can probably start shipping some planks into District 1. I feel like that's probably, uh, that's probably a fair thing to do. So we'll go ahead and set that up. We'll go ahead and look at the limits. And then on planks, it is going to be minimum 500 for us, maximum 500 for them. That'll be all right. So that'll help us out a little bit, I think. And we can probably go ahead and prioritize all this. And I don't really think it's going to take all that long to build them. And then, of course, the tribute to ingenuity needs 600 horsepower. So three engines. Uh, it is very cool. It is, it is very, very cool looking. It's also something that would fit really nicely in here, but I don't know how I would power it. So, uh, I don't know that we're going to build it. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't, I don't know that this is, uh, <laughs> I don't know that this is something we're actually going to construct. Because like I said, it would need three engines to power it. And I don't, I don't really see me squeezing three engines into, uh, into all of this space. Well, I could, especially with terraforming, we absolutely could, but I just don't know if it'd be worth it. It also needs, yeah, 400 planks, 200 gears, 300 metal blocks. I mean, we have those things. We don't have the gears, but the gears we can get. Oh, am I going to build, am I going to build this? I'm very tempted. I'm going to be honest because I'm, I'm realizing I could... I could potentially do a thing here. So if I was to do a double platform there and a double platform there, I could get a little platform to put this thing on. And then if I run power into the houses, it would transfer across. Oh, am I, am I about to do this? I am going to need three engines for it, though, but I feel like I feel like I could do it. So if I did this and I did this that sort of gives me a platform right and then this thing could just sit right there it would need to be higher is my thinking though so i might need to lean into this scaffolding thing again i mean what if we did let's let's have a look if it was that height what it would look like so right there it's gonna look ridiculous on this uh on on this scaffolding though 
it is going to look really properly silly. Actually, I've realized it also needs to be at that height. It 100% needs to be at that height. Because if it isn't, it's not going to have power because it won't be touching the buildings. So, as, as silly as this might look, this is kind of what we're going to have to go for. Oh, man. I don't love it. I really don't. I also realize I could... I could just build it on a metal platform. That would look very cool. That would that would actually look kind of cool, I'm going to be honest. Can I build a metal platform around here? No. That's that's unfortunate. I could build... Ooh. Now, hold on a minute. I wonder if... Wait, this thing... Oh, it's ground only. Oh. That's unfortunate. That would have been really cool. I'm going to be honest. All right. This is what we're doing. This is my stupid idea. Tribute to ingenuity can go right there. It is going to get power from the uh, the neighboring buildings because obviously you can see it's it's highlighting them. So that's that's going to be a thing. Oh, boy. Um, I don't know how we're going to build it, but we're going to we're going <laughs> to we're going <laughs> to we are going to. All right. Uh, take out this shrub for the time being and give me, I guess, can I get like a triple platform in there? Is that is that an option? It absolutely is. Okay. Give me some stairs and then rotate around. Give me a triple platform in there. Delete the shrub. Give me some stairs. And uh, hopefully that's going to give us access to all that space. Now, when it comes to the engines, I genuinely have no idea where I'm going to build them. No idea. I guess. Well, I guess we have these three here that we could repurpose if we really wanted to. <laughs> I don't know that I want to, but we could. Uh, we do also have the option of, I suppose, well, I suppose I could build like three engines sort of down here. Is that within range of the district though? Uh, it is. Oh boy. I think I'm about to build three engines down here and then use them to power a stupid statue. Oh, wait, no, I'm an idiot. I only need two engines, not three. That's, <laughs> that makes it so much better that I only need, only need two of them. Oh man, I, this is still, it's still stupid. It's still stupid. Uh, just to be clear on what I'm doing, by the way, we're going to have the engines here and we're going to run power lines the entire way across, all the way across here and into the side of this building. And that's how we're going to do this. It's... It's a dumb idea. It is. It's really stupid, but it's also probably going to work. So we're going to we're going to stick with it and we're going to see what comes of all of this. I think I can also go ahead and start laying out the uh, the power lines since those are 100 percent going to be probably going to need to be done before a lot of the rest of this is done, actually. So we'll go ahead and just sort of swing these around as best we can. We did a high power shaft right there and then a bunch of straight uh, lines that run that way. Those are already connected. This needs to be a corner right there. And then this will run the entire way over here and then into the side of the building as, as you can sort of see. It's ridiculous. It's, it's absolutely ridiculous, but it's also, it's also going to work, which is what's particularly stupid about it and so after surprisingly not as long as i thought it would be the monument is done all of the monuments are done and it actually looks a little bit better than i thought it was going to look we're also at level 25 happiness right now which is kind of wild to be totally honest and it could go higher we could get a carousel a mud bath uh, a Lido or Lido, whatever you want to call it. We could get books up here, which we never really did. We could go into all the different types of food and deal with the injuries. But honestly, I'm actually really, really pleased with how the Iron Isles is is going here. We're at level 26 in terms of in terms of happiness. It's really cool. That's that's about all I can say in terms of where we are with the Iron Isles. It's just really, it's really cool. It's really interesting. It's really, it's really cool zooming out and just, you can press control H to turn off the HUD. I don't know if I ever mentioned that before, but then this, this view right here, I start every episode with this view 
And I think it's usually the last view in every episode as well, because it's just such a cool look at the beginning, the middle, and sort of the, the future of the Iron Isles. And in a way, it's also a look at the end of the Iron Isles. I mentioned that this is the view at the start and the end of every episode, and that is going to be true for this one and for the series as well, because this is probably going to be the last episode of Timberborn for a while. I did mention that there might be an extra one if and when I do replace every beaver, but this is going to be the last regularly... <laughs> I was going to say regularly scheduled episode, but this series hasn't been regularly scheduled for a couple of weeks. You know what I mean? It's the last sort of numbered main episode of Timberborn because I don't really think there's too much more that I want to do with the game right now. I do want to give it a bit of a break. Update 3 is being worked on and is in the experimental branch on Steam, so... We're likely to check that out in probably the not too distant future, so keep an eye out for that if and when it shows up but that is going to do us both for today and for this series so thank you so much for watching everybody it has been an absolute pleasure as always and as always i'll see you next time Bye bye